<laughs> wow, well, here we go. Do you think we should have some theme music to go over this? Oh, some whiskey theme music. Take some glasses. Ding, and some ding, ice. ding. Ding, 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 and here we are. <laughs> Next time we have theme music. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. Please tell me in the chat that you can hear and see us. Um, before we go too, too far, please somebody write in there. I can see you. I can hear you. Okay. I can see and hear you. Thank you very much, Sandy. Appreciate it. Okay. So this is, we have, uh, this is a carnival of technology we have mm -hmm. happening here in front of us. So um, if anything goes wrong, just <laughs> we'll come right Let back as fast as we can. Okay. So welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for our first ever Weddings Over Whiskey Virtual Wedding Planning Workshop. Oh, it's a mouthful. Yes. Almost as much of a mouthful as the Jack Daniels we have had, which we're going to talk about in just a minute but first let's do a couple introductions and let's start off with everybody who's here yes hey everybody thank you so much for coming here tonight uh for those of you who don't know me my name is Lori mccarthy and i am a wedding planner coordinator and i'm the founder of the paper bride and styled co here in chatham yeah and we're actually filming filming we're not filming uh, but we're broadcasting from <laughs> from your studio here in yes. Chatham. So this is, uh, this is nice. Uh, and then um, I'm John, John Lyons. I am a photographer based here in Chatham, but all of my work here is uh, between Windsor, London, Toronto, a little bit here in Chatham, and of course, uh, Mexico, which uh, we just got back from. So um, I typically don't shoot weddings in the winter up, up here and we shoot down South as much as possible. And this was the first time we were able to go down south because the pandemic stopped all the destination mm -hmm. weddings. So we're very happy that they're back. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tan. I'm not blushing. <laughs> and of course, we have joining us our very special guest, Amanda Garcia, who is a client and now friend of both of ours. Mm -hmm. She had her wedding this past summer. So Amanda, say a big hello. Hi, everybody. So we have a little bit, uh, a bit of a bigger conversation that we'll have with Amanda in a little bit, but let's get right, get right into it tonight. So the first question that we have is why whiskey? Why is it weddings over whiskey? And uh, tell us, Lori, um, where that came from. Why <laughs> <I> me? <mean. laughs> because Chris, Chris's fault. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lori loves right. whiskey. Yes. Yeah, they yes, are. But no, <laughs> so for anyone who knows us, knows that we love to have a good time. Um, and whiskey is usually at the root of it or usually mm -hmm. starts it. Um, right. So yeah, we were out um, having fun you know, just some drinks one night and, and we were trying to think of, you know, what we were going to call this program we were doing right. and, and we we're going back and forth with all these names. And after a few whiskeys, <laughs> it's actually my husband came up with the weddings yes, over whiskey right. and we looked at each other. Genius. That is genius. Absolutely genius. genius. Absolutely genius. All good things happen over whiskey. Of course. Right. Everyone knows that. Yes. <laughs> and anybody who knows me knows I'm I'm a tequila guy at mm -hmm. heart, uh, mm -hmm. mostly when it's mixed with lime and salt, making a margarita. But um, what I do drink whiskey, it is a Jack Daniels, which is what we have on top serving here tonight at the Paper Bride, which is um, my favorite. <laughs> Advertising that. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't always have whiskey being served here at the Paper Bride. But never, never. But anyway, so tonight it's Jack Daniels. And next time uh, you did promise me we would have tequila the next time we do this. Perfect. But we'll still call it Weddings Over Whiskey because Weddings Over Tequila just doesn't have the same. Yeah, I'm just playing around. Just keep going. Okay. All right. So here we are. Um, so let's get right into this. When you're planning your wedding, it all starts with your vision, right? It all starts with what you want in your wedding. And I'm going to tell you that, you know, when when I got married, when Larissa and I got married, well, it'll be 30 years ago this summer, um, and probably the same with you guys too, right? Like, we didn't have the choices that we have now. We had, the choices were one o'clock and three o'clock at a church, mm -hmm. and then depending on the size of your wedding party or the size of your guest list, you had a choice of this big venue or that big venue or this small venue. We didn't have those. And so many times your whole day was dependent on what church was available and when mm -hmm. and what venue was available. Mm -hmm. Now 
your brides are really in the driver's seat, right? There's so many amazing venues. And certainly the pandemic has has been a bit contributing to all the options right there because there's backyard weddings, there's winery weddings, there's big venues, big, beautiful venues. There's converted pole barns. There's yeah, there's all kinds of options for the for 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 couples now that they're not dependent on St. Joe's church or this church or mm -hmm. this hall being available or not. They can pretty much have the wedding mm -hmm. wherever and whenever they want, mm -hmm. but most important, mostly aligned with their vision. What kind of wedding mm -hmm. do they want, right? Mm -hmm. Do they want boho? Do you want um, a black tie? Do you want elegant, mm -hmm. right? And then from there, once you decide on your vision, then you pick your your creative professionals to work with you. Right. And so I, I remember back in the day, people would plan their entire wedding around their venue and whether, you know, what they would pick their date yeah. when their venue was available. No, that still happens a little bit, especially if you have your heart set on a venue, sure. but with so many amazing properties out there mm -hmm. now um, that we saw, we saw during COVID like property weddings just exploded. In fact, right. our business grew because of right. it. Um, but you can get really creative then. And then we're going to talk about the timeline a little bit in a little bit, but that also affects your timeline because you know, as some venues, they have a specific timeline or you, or depending on the time of year, you have to watch for sunsets and all that. But when you can have your wedding anywhere you want and really anywhere mm -hmm. in the world that you want, mm -hmm. picking your professionals to come with you or to help plan around your vision, well, you can make it happen anywhere, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. So it does, as long as you have four walls and even now, what's so exciting is you can actually build those walls from the ground up. Right. Mm -hmm. So you don't actually have to have walls exactly. and you can still have a wedding. That's right. Well, you really need, you just need the couple and an efficient. We see you, Chris, <laughs> Diane, and Larissa. We see you. <laughs> That's really all you need. But and of course, you need a photographer and all yes. those other things. But someone to plan it. And of course, a, a plan it. Plan it. <laughs> but again, my point is: start with your vision. What kind of wedding do you want to have? If you picture yourself at a vet, at a venue that you've been to weddings at, and you want to be there, then 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 that's your vision. Then then go for it. Or if you want to have an intimate backyard affair, or you want to be at, uh, you know, the yacht club or somewhere super fancy, it's it's really up to you. Then, then from that point, you can pick all the your creative partners to execute on that vision. Yeah, and that starts with you, with the wedding planner. With, mm -hmm. Oh, it starts with me. Yeah. <laughs> right um, yeah. So when you when you you decided you want to get married and you you're engaged and it's kind of start to real really move along quickly, mm -hmm. um, you know you want to pick professionals who can help kind of guide you along, not just guide you, but will actually follow along with you and offer advice because that's mm -hmm. what you want when you're planning your wedding. Right. You don't want people to tell you how your wedding's going to look. You mm -hmm. you want them to listen to you. You want them their expertise. And maybe there's something you're thinking about that needs to be tweaked a little bit in order for you to get the look that you want. Mm -hmm. And what I really love about all the new, the industry professionals that are out there and is that they're all designers in their own right, mm -hmm. which is really cool to work with. Now, back in the day, I mean, you would hire a photographer just to do photos or, and they would wait for direction from you, mm -hmm. or you would hire a florist and you'd pick from whatever, you know, was in their repertoire. Um, but now you're actually hiring professionals because you like what they did somewhere else mm -hmm. or that they actually have the ability to make it more you, mm -hmm. right? And I remember your wedding yeah. being very much like that, where it's like, I like this bouquet, but I want it in these colors. Yes. Right. And back in the day, you couldn't do that. So what's really amazing now is that you're not just hiring vendors anymore. Right. You're, right. Everyone's a designer in their own right. Exactly. You're not hiring people and plugging into, into what they're doing. Yes. You're hiring people who are aligned with your vision and executing on that. And as an example, that I'll say this with, with photography, if somebody comes to me and they want dark and moody photography because that's the wedding they've envisioned, well, I'm not the photographer for them, mm -hmm. right? Like, that's not me. Like, when you when you called, like, it, like you wanted, you know, my style, right? Yeah, well, I've you, been following John for, for years, like, even before I was engaged. I remember messaging you even before I was engaged. <laughs> like, John, I need you. 
put me aside. I don't know when, but just, I need you. And we had a little chat about that. So it was great. Miguel, I loved his. Miguel, is it fair so. to say that you, you picked me before Miguel? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry <Miguel>. <laughs> but I loved his work and I had been following him for right. years, but that was the aesthetic that I was going for right. was what John was offering. Right. So. And that apl- and that's for me, but it applies to any photographer. Like okay. there's so many good photographers out there that mm-hmm and create you know, florist designers th- this statement applies to everybody if you see yourself in that their work that's the person for you exactly. then you hire that person mm-hmm. like i can only shoot 20 weddings in a year um if somebody came to me and said oh, i really want this dark and moody style or i want whatever whatever and it's not me i'm i'm not only going to be not able to do that but the client will be disappointed yeah yeah if somebody came to me and said i want to shoot a classic wedding in all black and white Aaron, I know, I know that's you. Um, then, then I'm the guy, right? Then, then I will do my absolute best work for them. And I think every other creative professional feels the same. They want to be aligned with, with the couple, right? Well, and that's why we always say as as wedding planners that we're matchmakers, right? Like we are matchmakers because we meet with the couples way before you even get called, and we match them up with the right professional because. But the other part too is, you know, I look out for my, my people mm-hmm. because I don't want to put you with a couple that there it's just not the vision isn't the right. same. Right. And you don't want to be put in a situation as a professional where it's beyond your scope of work. Right. Sure. So we are really our matchmakers in that way. So but tell me what's the difference. Well, don't tell me. <laughs> uh, I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, the difference between a wedding planner and a wedding coordinator because they are very different and have very different roles with your event yes that is very true and we do get this question a lot so i I, i'm going to try to say as clear as i can and uh because there's so many facets and they definitely um cross over at just before the wedding starts a wedding planner is you you have them right from the beginning so as soon as you're ready to start planning maybe you're a month into it maybe you're feeling overwhelmed or you're just got engaged and you're super excited and you haven't planned a thing we literally help you we sit beside you Mm -hmm. and we go through our checklist and we help you plan every professional that you need Um, we've got everything organized for you and we help put all the pieces together. So you're not spending hours on the internet searching Mm -hmm. and researching. Mm -hmm. And so you might come to us as a wedding planner and say, I'm thinking about these three photographers. Do you know them? And most oftentimes we will know them. Mm -hmm. And and I'll, and I'll ask you, you know, what are you looking for in a photographer or whatnot? And I'll help match you up with the right person, the right budget. So a wedding planner really start starts you off and brings you right through the process and gives you tips and tricks along the way but also does a lot of the research for you or it's already been done which is great right <laughs> so which is you great think about all those hours you spend on google and pinterest yes. and and you're like does this make sense is this really real and whereas really literally an hour with a, a wedding planner mm-hmm. can answer probably 30 right. of your questions right there Yep. That brings us to about a month before the uh, the show, <laughs> and you either hire a coordinator just for the day, or you've had your wedding planner all along, and they switch hats. But if you just want a coordinator for the day, which is how we met, that's how me and Lori met, yeah. a month before the wedding, I actually sit down with you and I say, "Tell me everything. Yes, take it out of your brain." And put it into mine. Take the stress. (laughs) (laughs) But literally tell me, who did you book? How much did you pay? What is your contract say? What would you like to happen? What would you not like to happen on Mm -hmm. the day? I know there were a few of, this can't happen on my day. (laughs) So it's all of those kind of those bringing comfort to your day and knowing you have someone attached to you for the whole day, wrapping a bubble around your beautiful couple. And just so your family and friends aren't working Mm -hmm. the day. So that is what a coordinator does. So whether you have a coordinator from the beginning or you have them for just the day of, we literally take it all off your plate and we manage the day. 
Mm -hmm. And we move things along. We move the timeline and go, we get people in <laughs> their butts great. in here. <laughs> you remember what the grim sense were like for me. Lori had them in check. Like, okay, guys, I know you're getting a little rowdy, but we got to go. So it was wonderful. <laughs> One side glance from yeah, the bride exactly. and I knew. Like, so <laughs> that's just, the, that, that is yeah. the difference. They do overlap a month before, mm -hmm. but a planner helps you plan it. Like, yes. I don't know where to go for this. Um, how do I get this, you know, for a better price? How do I do this? And and wedding planners do get amazing deals mm -hmm. from their sure. professionals. <laughs> so that is one bonus. But the coordinator is actually there by your side all day. They're right. there the night before, the day of, and the day after. Which is a blessing, you guys. A but, blessing. I tell we, you. we do that as well. Like I'll, if I know that I'm working with you or any other wedding planner or day of coordinator, like we'll take a little bit of, out of our, out of our final proposal because we know that we don't have to do that that coordinating work well, let me just admit bailey here okay uh because we don't have to do that work so i know that if the, it's in the hands of a wedding coordinator then if we can combo that pricing a little bit mm -hmm. okay so looking at other wedding professionals we have it starts starts with you but then then there's your your venue it's your ceremony going to be at the same place as your reception Yes. So your venue doesn't mean a brick and mortar. It means where are you going to be hosting your wedding? So whether you have everything in one place and you have your ceremony separate from your reception and somehow when we tie it all together, or you're actually off in a completely different area, mm -hmm. you might want your ceremony in a park or on a beach or on a private property, but then your ven your reception happens in a completely mm. different location. You have to and you have to move people. So you're right. moving 150 people to a brand new location. So your venue has to fit your vibe and the look you want for your day. Right. So this, um, these are the, you know, the categories that I have on screen right now are sort of the big categories. Mm -hmm. um, obviously there's a lot more than, than just this. There's your dress, there's all those other things, yes. but these are the, the big, the big targets on your wedding day, right? Like your decor, your design, what's what's the look and feel, your florist. And quite often those sometimes are the same person, sometimes the, yeah. the planner is doing mm -hmm. your, your design. So when you're hiring some of these, and I think just right off the top of my head, like your, like your florist, do you want, and I know some of you are watching today, um, want to know what are some of the questions I ask? So we'll, we'll dive in a little bit, but not too much, but your florist, you know, are you wanting wildflowers? Are you wanting flora flowers that are in season at the time of your wedding? And for all of you, you're having November, December weddings where flowers aren't in season, <laughs> naturally. <laughs> so, you know, what's the difference right. and how much do you budget for that? So if you're getting married in June, July, you're going to budget different. Right. So having that relationship with your florist is important and going to them early. Don't get caught two months before your wedding and your florist says, but that's not in season or I can't get those right now. Right. So, you know, working with them to help you design it, will they deliver uh, or do you have to pick up? Mm -hmm. um, how, how long will they, the boutonnieres last? How do you put boutonnieres on? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> None of my groomsmen, even my husband had no idea. Yes. So thank you, Lori. <laughs> uh, so it's like all these little questions yeah. that are big on the day of, yeah. right? Yeah. So things that you don't even really think about too, right? And that's where Lori came in. All the little tiny details that I wasn't thinking about because I was thinking about the bigger pictures. Lori were like, well, what about this? So thank you for that. <laughs> uh, and then we get down to, you know, the bigger things, you know, like your photography, your catering and your music. You just that, skimmed right over photography. I was, I'm going to give you your own spot. <laughs> <laughs> you give me a <laughs> But uh, your catering and your and your music, you know, such big important parts of the day. Yes. Your music, will they come out to a park? Do they have a generator? Power, um, right? power. Do they have what kind of music do they like to play? Are they comfortable with? Are they? Uh, do they usually do smaller weddings versus bigger weddings? Like mm -hmm. that's that matchmaking piece. But that's what the things that you have to talk to your partner about and say what are the what is really important to us because we want to make sure that they are booked according to your plan. Catering's a big one this year yeah uh, especially since covid yeah. you didn't have to worry so i didn't much. have to worry thank goodness but uh, you were married at, at ambassador it was in yes Windsor, and so mm -hmm. it was a, we'll talk about that when we come to your to okay. your slide but yep. for those of you in the group right now watching catering has been um, a huge topic yeah. this year since COVID. Um, we have so many amazing caterers who are just sought after mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and the thing and you know really picking 
menus that work in the venue because it's not just all brick and mortar venues. Right. They can't just bring a food trucker here or there. Where do they plug in? So the other thing too is that there's they're wanted so much that they can't service everyone. So you're right. right. In summer, uh, and this is, we found this a lot last year and certain in a couple of weddings that we have this year that yes, they are great cooks and great at preparing and plating, but they don't serve. So now you have to Higher think service. about yeah. your, your service team and you're like, who's going to bring the plates out and who's going to clear. And the caterer is like, well, I, I'm just, I'm just cooking. <laughs> right. And go for those of you who have experienced that, you know, we have a lot of drop and go, we can make it for you. So you get your favorite food and your what you're actually really wanted, but then who's mm -hmm. going to set the tables and the plates right. and all that. So those are some big questions to ask. Right. Um, all the details. <laughs> yeah, and I encourage you. So if you're at a venue, that's all, that's really taken care of, yes. which is amazing, right? Mm -hmm. They're in-house chef, they're in-house service team. Right. And that's kind of one of those stressors that when you pick a venue that's brick and mortar, you don't have to worry about that. Right. So that's amazing. Um, but for those of you planning offsite, uh, that's your job. Right. You, figure you, out how figure the it's on the table. Yeah, you figure out how it gets cleaned up. Yeah. Um, and so don't forget your cutlery and your glassware and all of that. Right. right? So yeah. uh, music and entertainment, of course, band or DJ. Think about that. Um, I right now I'm I'm loving live music. Right. Oh, like I these days, that. you know how I feel about so live nice, music, but too. with live music, you still need your DJ yeah. to play yes, in between. You do. Um, and a lot of bands will have that combo package. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's some great DJs too, that just can, mm -hmm. and is it an ethnic wedding? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And is, do you have to play, you know, Lebanese music, Arab music, or do you have to, mm -hmm. or whatever, do you have to bring in a Greek, a Greek DJ, yeah, you know, yeah. which we, we see a lot that, and something to keep in mind with music too, is you really want to talk to your, mu your, the person doing your music well in advance, because, you know, when it comes to copyrights and what they actually can play, the version that you think in your head is going to be played at your wedding, they can't actually right. play. So remembering to ask them that, have your list ready to go. Are you going to have a first dance and when, mm -hmm. when is, and then we'll talk about timeline there. Um, are you going to have father, daughter, mother, son dances or, you know, mm -hmm. how many of them so they need to know all of that stuff mm -hmm. and I know that they all have um, questionnaires that they give you mm -hmm. but I do encourage you couples to not just wait for the questionnaire about two weeks before your wedding because that's usually when it comes out contact them months before make sure that you're not disappointed I have seen some couples disappointed that they're the dance they thought was going to be their first dance the version wasn't right oh, and that's just all had to do with copyright and so can so yeah. um just one of those for those of you who are big music buffs that's important because I know for some people the music is all Everything. it and also find out too you know how long are they going to play for and when is your cutoff so mm -hmm. i know yours went really <laughs> like really your late. venue was amazing <laughs> and it went to what two in the morning oh, oh god i was like guys i have my beer I let's think go my contract was done at 8 30 yeah. and i didn't leave until midnight oh, yeah, so. sure. <laughs> it was a party guys it was a great time <laughs> pj you killed it yeah yeah oh yeah, PJ's awesome. awesome. Yeah, um, but it was uh, it's something to ask, right? Um, make sure that you you know what your entertainment is going to look like and how long you have them for. Yes, mm -hmm. that's and very if important. they're willing to stay. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So when we come to photography and videography, one of the first things that um, couples do book. Uh, oftentimes mm -hmm. they book that before their wedding planner because I, <laughs> I always ask, do you have a photographer? Oh yes, we have a photographer. <laughs> and it is important because that those are the pieces that are going to last forever, right? Um, so booking someone, especially and photographers and videographers that work together. Well, very important. yes, that very work very well important. together. Um, <laughs> and there's some companies out there that are like photo video combos and they do, they do a great job. Although I am a a big believer in you hire an expert to do because there's amazing photographers and there's amazing videographers. And if they work well together, you're just going to have magic, right? And no drama. And we want and no drama. <laughs> no absolutely drama. not. And you really want to make sure that they work well together because you want when the photos are delivered and when the video is delivered, you want to look that it was the same event. Yes. And uh, it, they're they're not shot at totally different times. And, you know, Mike, who I work with at yours yep. um, and every videographer I've worked with, we're, we just, 
instead of having a half an hour video time and a half an hour photography time, it's like we share the same scenes and mm -hmm. I'll set something up and, uh, and Michael shoot it or whoever, or he'll set something up and I'll shoot and I'll shoot it. So that way it looks like it was the same event, right? It was great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Someone we didn't have on and have on here, I think was the officiant. And I want to cycle to that one because um, with when I my experience is when you hire your photographer, mm -hmm. your caterer, and your officiant are usually, and then I find out about it. But um, your officiant too is so important that you research the style and the and the personality that you want standing up there with you yes. because they are in your most intimate photos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. They're in all of them. Yeah, yeah. 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 they duck out. <laughs> you do your best yes. Yeah, make sure they move out. Um, <laughs> but I, I just I can't I can't stress how important it is that that you meet with them before you mm -hmm. book, mm -hmm. that you talk to them, you ask them cer certain questions, and then really use them as they're at for their expertise. Yep. They've done a lot. They've seen a lot of couples up there. But you know, when you're in that moment, oh, I remember yes. letting you go down the aisle. <laughs> again, there she goes. <laughs> and then, but knowing that you were going up, and yes. then I I wasn't, I couldn't anywhere near you. Mm -hmm. But knowing how comfortable you were with him up yes. there and when you're nervous and you can just look at that person. So Efficient being really important, just not shopping around because of price or this or yeah, that. No just interview them, let mm -hmm. uh, ask them, say, this is, we want you to say this. We don't want you to say that, yes. right? So really important. We have some amazing efficients here in the Chatham County area. You have some amazing efficients in this chat. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we see you. Um, like, and I've been to weddings where um, the efficient was so good that the bride has said that's who I want I want that's that how I picked my efficient that's honestly. who I <laughs> want to to preside over my wedding yes right so in in any like even for me every wedding's an audition for the next one but I think for the officiant it's multiplied even more mm -hmm. right that they are really on stage that there are 150 people watching them yeah. and hopefully they're invisible but present yes you know, if you know what if you know what that means if yeah. they mean that they, that they don't take over that they are leaving it up to you guys but right. still making a statement yes. it, right mm -hmm. yeah right yeah mm -hmm. okay and absolutely you're right that efficient it's really they don't even need a photographer they just need an efficient <laughs> right? that's very true yeah they don't, they don't need us at all <laughs> but be be good to your efficiency well we both married one so yes. <laughs> wow one of our best friends yes mm -hmm. yes we love our efficients okay so um where were we, we got we're just kind of down to the last one i mean like it's not exhaustive uh, like you said but transportation being really really important mm -hmm. too i know a lot of the you in the in the chat the group right now you're all from our local area and i know that transportation is is a big issue yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. for us and so um really having someone reliable but also knowing how many people are you transporting and where do you need to go from point a to point b and making sure that fits in your timeline because transportation eats up a big part of that yes, <laughs> ceremony <it does>. yes. <laughs> reception. as a planner when i'm waiting for you to come yes. back oh, um, yes. right so <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for you and I'm texting you. How far are you? Yep. So having a really reliable transportation company is important. So definitely reach out to your professionals that you're working with. Who do they recommend? Who have they worked with? Um, there's very few around our area. Um, so we do have some that we definitely mm -hmm. use more than right. others and book it early. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah, so book right. your transportation early because there's so few in our area that if you don't book them first, they're guaranteed to be taken up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Um, and we're actually, we're doing well on time. So uh, kudos to us. Yeah, kudos to our planner for just yay, planner. For keeping everybody keeping us on time. On time. <laughs> uh, but the one thing I want to mention is that um, your family should not be your event or your wedding coordinator. Uh, in my intake questionnaire, when people inquire, I always ask, do you have a wedding planner? And because I want to connect with the wedding planner early. Um, and quite often I'll get the answer, oh no, my mom will do it or whatever. It's like, no, they need to enjoy the day. Yes, they right? do. Okay. 
I love when they're part of the planning process though. I love having them here at the table. I love when your bridesmaids and your best friends come and they're super organized or they're really good with the crickets or this and that. I think that's where they should really shine mm -hmm. is in the planning part of it and do what they need to do, what they want to do for you ahead of time. Um, and then let them enjoy the day. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I, John and I talk about this a lot where oftentimes, and it's happened and we don't pretend it doesn't, is that someone is off doing an errand for someone, it's mom or dad or grandma or aunt, whatever, mm -hmm. and they miss the photos. Yeah, They're not in the photo or they miss you know, the fireworks or this mm -hmm. and that, and they hear about it later. Mm -hmm. And you think, how come, you know, aunt so-and-so isn't in any of these pictures? Because she was out she was getting out ice. Get getting ice. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. We'll talk about yeah. ice later. Yeah. <laughs> ice is the big thing. Or there are the generators. Or yeah. this and that. So as much as you think, oh no, that won't happen to me. I have 20 years in this business. It has happened more times than I like yep. to admit. It can happen, for sure. so, and you can probably attest to that. Oh, Do you want your sure. bride? Your, any of your bridesmaids no. could have could have coordinated your day. Well, my maid of honor was fabulous, but I also wanted her to sit down and enjoy a day. She's done enough for me, like bachelorette and my shower and stuff like that, that I didn't want my girls working on the day of. I wanted them to then enjoy my wedding as much as right. I did too, right? So right. Lori was kind of in the background taking care of all that stuff. So my girls didn't have to. So it was great. Well, and whether, you know, and it's not just me, but um, if you, if you're having your wedding on a private property and those of you in this group, I know you are, um, is that the, the people who own the property, it is a natural, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's natural for them to want to, to host, host yes. and make <laughs> things good. And do you need this and move things around mm -hmm. and at the last minute stuff. And uh, so, you know, whatever you can do to help them get that done I would say by Wednesday is always my cutoff for for property owners mm -hmm. and it's usually sometimes it's not even your own private property it's someone else's that you're using is my cutoff is Wednesday landscaping is done grass is cut yes. then you are no longer this is no longer yours like I yeah. take over kind of thing but even if you don't you know you don't have a coordinator you want to make sure that the property owners are enjoying your wedding because yep. I in my experiences they don't one of the nicest uh, moments that we had this year was when we were out in at, at Bloom. Bloom Acres. And um, <laughs> it's a beautiful uh, yeah. little venue uh, out near Bothwell. And we were doing the wedding and we, I just happened to turn and you were close to me and the, ven the, the venue owners who were so sweet were standing by like the, this, they have this cool uh, bar log bar mm -hmm. and they were all standing there watching the wedding and That's I was just so not nice. it was so sweet because they worked so nice. hard to make this Aww. to make this venue ready that they got to enjoy that it. they finally got to just yeah, and then take cute. it in and take in all of their hard work so yeah. just let let the coordinators let the, let, the, let, the, let the planner play in and let the coordinator run. coordinate <laughs> okay and we got to watch Diane Hill do her her, her magic yes. that day. I remember <laughs> that that moment where we were all just there by the logs. It was so beautiful. Yes. So hi to Diane. <laughs> we know you're out there. Okay. Well, Amanda, hi. look at this. Look at this. It's you and the best Mikhail. picture ever. <laughs> Thanks, John. Yes. Oh, yes, you're welcome. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about your day, but most mostly like the planning of your day, because we want to talk about. Uh, we have a lot to cover in this last little hour. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about what you did right, anything you wish you could do over. We'll talk about oh budgets, mm -hmm. and then we'll actually build some real live timelines, and we'll try and do that all in an hour. So, okay. okay. So, you're planning. So, pretend we're your two girlfriends, and we're getting married, and... Um, <laughs> I'm just going to read the, the chat. Um, and we are, we're planning a wedding, and... We say to you, Amanda, you had a beautiful wedding. What are your top tips for us? Give me, give us the top things to do. Um, hi, hiring a wedding planner <laughs> and a coordinator. She wasn't supposed to say that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> not a commercial. You no, know, I'm not advertising. I'm just saying, like having Lori there was fabulous. And my husband, he told me to say this specifically. Lori made my wedding. <laughs> like he loved Lori. She did so much for us, but, um, 
No, it was, it was a lot. So I'm a COVID bride. Um, we got engaged during COVID in 2020. So we planned and postponed and planned and postponed. And so it was a lot all at once. So all that stress kind of built up. And I remember venting to John one day, I'm like, I don't know, like everything was pretty much kind of planned. So but having that person to kind of bring everything together at the end and kind of take that stress off, as Lori would say, mm -hmm. um, really came in clutch at the right opportunity. So when I vented to John one day, he was just like, well, go just go sit down and talk with Lori. I'm so glad that I did mm -hmm. because she paid attention to all the little details that I didn't really know about. Um, but yeah, so things that I did right. Um, I loved having all of my girls in one place when we were getting ready. That mm -hmm. was a big ordeal for me. I wanted all my girls mm -hmm. to be in one spot, getting ready, hair and makeup, enjoying the day, having mimosas, having breakfast and stuff like that. And then my husband wanted the same thing with the guys. So that was one thing that I do. I'm happy that I did. Mm -hmm. um, what else? First look, yes or no? First look, yeah, do it. <laughs> Honestly, my husband was, he's very traditional. Um, but he also didn't really know what a first look was. Um, he wanted to have me walk down the aisle and that would be the first time that he would see me. Mm -hmm. But the more I started talking about the timeline and you know, having that first look is so intimate because your wedding is so crazy and there's so much chaos that you don't really get to spend that intimate moment with your husband much during your wedding, believe it or not. And it, and it goes by very, very fast. Right. So yeah. having that first look, we got to spend those few moments together, you know, talking and doing those intimate photos with John and just the two of us. Right. And then we got to like the, the you and Miguel, not the two of us. <laughs> John, but no, me and Miguel. Well, there. <laughs> so that was great. I I'm a really big advocate for a first look, not only for timeline wise, but the time that you get to spend with your husband. Right. So, right. Mm -hmm. and then we got to spend time with our wedding party after, instead of just, you know, leaving and le leaving our guests, while we're off taking photos and doing stuff and then not being able to enjoy cocktail hour with our guests and stuff mm -hmm. too. So that was really great. What about talk about, I remember being with you when you went to pick out your, your appetizers. And yes. I know that seems like a little thing, but I get this question from clients all the time about, yes. you know, picking something that's standard off their menu. But I sat with you during mm -hmm. that meeting and what was important to you? So my husband, his family is from Spain and um, they're big foodies, obviously. And my husband, part of the reason why we even chose ambassador because the chef Daniel um, trained in Italy. So he knows European food very well. And so one of his biggest thing was, I really want to add a Spanish flair to our cocktail hors d'oeuvres. So some chorizo and some jamón or some kind of way to incorporate that Spanish tradition into our cocktail hour, which was really great. I thought that was one thing you did really, really yeah. well. And it turned out really great. Actually. I mean, we were there for a long time. It was, it was not painstaking, but it was like one thing. And we talked about each piece. Yes. But at, you probably didn't hear it, but at the reception, that's what everyone talked oh, about. No, I you, were off getting <laughs> photos. you were off yeah. getting photos done and everyone commented on the oh, cheese. Good. And yeah. I thought, wow, they actually picked out the elements that were so important yeah. to you and Miguel. Yeah. And, and that's I, what working with a venue too, like Lori said, like you want to pick mm -hmm. something that's going to work with you instead of just yeah. picking what they offer you. So mm -hmm. like I said, part of the reason why we chose ambassador actually. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, yeah, and I would say most caterers around here, if you sit down with them, you get a custom um, cocktail yep. hour yeah, anyways. For sure. Trying to think of all the things you you did really well. Um, talk about um, like planning for what to bring on the bus and all of that, like what to oh, have. That was... That's what we say. Well, except, you know, leave, don't leave all the details, but uh, like what to have as a bride. So bus. what happened for me personally was my eyelash started coming off in the bus and we're on the way to do this first look and I'm panicking. I didn't even think to bring tweezers, eyelash glue. I forgot my lipstick. Like there's so many things like little details that you really don't think of. And then John's second photographer came in clutch with the eyelash glue and the tweezers and fixed myself up. So having a little, I want to say an emergency, emergency kit, kit so is to very my, important. My defense, I was at the, Lori, yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> the boys were animals and Lori needed to be there to keep them under yeah, control. Beautiful. I had the eyelash glue, but I was in the wrong. Yes, was which I told her to go and be with the boys because yeah. they wouldn't get there on time if Lori wasn't there. So <laughs> to be fair, that was what happened. But yeah, no, having an emergency kit is definitely important as well. Yeah. Okay. When um, you picked your vendors originally, how did you find them? Um, very welcoming. Um, as you can tell from my personality, I'm very loud and bodacious. Um, so I no. needed someone you didn't know. Um, so I needed to work with like my vendors who could match my personality. Right. So like I said, with my officiant, um, I went to a couple of weddings before and, um, they were kind of funny and through a couple of jokes and stuff like that. And I really liked that with my officiant, but then they were very soft and romantic, which I also love as well. And then Florist, um, I chose um, based on social media, I think like that. Okay. And then um, my decor was recommended to me by my venue. And that was her just showing me catalogs and stuff of her work. And I, I loved it. And it worked well with mm -hmm. the venue as well. Um, but the videographer I chose um, because with John works along with Mike quite frequently over the oceans. Um and they work well together. And I met with Mike and he was very sweet and very nice. And he vibed well with me. So that's kind of oh, how Mike gets along with everybody. I know. So a teddy bear. He's great. Yeah. So that's kind of how it worked out that way. Yeah. yeah right on. Any, any do overs, anything that you were just like, oh, I wish I would have. I wish I would have sat and taken in the day more. Like right. Lori always came to me and she was like, listen, this day goes by so fast. I wish you would just like take a breath and just soak it all in. So that was a big thing is that it went by very fast for me. Um, I do regret not hiring um, Lori for the planning part, especially during COVID and stuff like that and taking the stress off of me for that aspect. But I don't think there's really anything else. The DJ was great. Um, timeline was good, mm -hmm. but I'm working with Lori and John with the timeline too, right? right. Which helped a lot. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about timeline. Yeah. We'll even talk. I think I used your timeline as an example. For, oh, good. For one of them. So we'll, yeah. we'll get into that. Okay. So, I mean, thank you. Yeah, that's You're amazing. So you can stick <laughs> around. You can, you can, like, Let's you some more questions. <laughs> it's so much better coming from you than us anyway. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And move yes. on to, I guess so. We're going to talk about budget. Is there anyone, and if you have any questions, please throw them in the chat because oh, it's so right. much easier to answer them as we go and we're in the moment. Okay. All right. So uh, let me find the right slide. Let's budget. So let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. Budget is a big one. Amanda and I were talking about mm -hmm. that before we went on air and, uh, and just about how to be transparent with your budget and being really honest. So we, I do have a few comments that I want to make. Of course, budget is, is huge and it's very personal, um, but setting your budget, you have to understand what you and your partner want, right? Mm -hmm. um, you have to know because you have to be on the same page. Um, when you see this image in your head of what you're what your wedding should look like, your budget kind of has to match that, right? 100%. And you have to do your research. You have to do your research on that. So Reese, one thing I always say is research prices in the area you want to get married in. Do not base your mm -hmm. budget on something or a place that's three hours away or even a destination wedding. You know, if you're on a Toronto budget, but you're getting married in Chatham or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So research the prices in your area, because when we were doing your wedding in Windsor, very different from Chatham, even though oh, it's yeah. only an hour away, yeah. but you have to be realistic and, you know, and also the experience of your professionals, you get what you pay for sometimes, oh, right? Sure. Yep. So definitely, but I think the very first thing I always ask couples is, have you two talked about this? <laughs> because your $30,000 budget isn't matching her $50,000 yes. budget or, you know, his 80. And so oftentimes you I, I encourage you to leave some room in it to go up and down. But the, the best part about planning is that you can take from one area and mm -hmm. move it into another if you know the right people and you know how to do that. But talk to each other have a number in your head so that it doesn't shock you. Um, the big buzzword in wedding world is sticker shock, right? right. Um, yes. Everyone uses it. I hate that term so much. <laughs> it's not a sticker shock, but it does surprise people. It's like, wow. Like you just I was that. just talking about the before we went on air saying like, I, I had, I had an idea of how much weddings cost, but then like I started to sit down with Lori and go through all the 
the details and I was like holy crap you know and there is <laughs> that's a, how much it costs or you yeah. <laughs> and there is a a perception and I and it is a misconception that mm -hmm. uh if you're in the wedding business you can charge more because you're in the wedding business yes but if you've ever been in the wedding business mm -hmm. it's it's, it's crazy. It's, yes, <laughs> it's crazy. you do get what you pay for. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of people who will say, "Oh, I'll just show up. I'll just, you know, he's a photographer. I'll, I'll just shoot your wedding for, you know, a thousand dollars or whatever." Yeah, like, absolutely. you do not want a thousand dollar photographer. Not have them um, edit the photos and yeah, you got a big booger hanging out of yeah. your nose. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> but, and that's the same with, uh, well, you know, with every, uh, and all your creative partners, right? Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes, there are some diamonds in the rough. Or there's people who are some amazingly talented artists who are maybe just starting out, who maybe aren't at the same level budget wise, but anybody good is going to be in around the same amount. Exactly. And you shouldn't be picking your photographer, videographer based on $500 plus or minus. Yeah. Right. You I should agree. be picking them based on, do you see yourself in those photos mm -hmm. or do you see them doing your imitations or rocking the rocking the night away right yeah exactly yeah. so right. the other thing is agree on a max number of guests like have an idea that was where <laughs> so, we struggled with the most i think right I know, i'm portuguese yes. so i totally related yeah. <laughs> my husband's spanish so i wanted like grander people i was like no so you no. know i think covid kind of really changed that the last few years but we're bouncing back for sure but yes. definitely agree on a number so look at your venue first if your venue can only hold 165 people you need to stay within 30 to 40 people of that you need to be able to go up and down because trying to squeeze them into a space that doesn't fit yes is so extremely stressful and for those of you planning tent weddings it's even more stressful because mm. you just don't have room to build more walls right and, and so um that's one of the biggest things that when i'm doing everyone's um layouts on the computer or whatever however i'm doing it trying to squeeze one more table of eight is mm. just is really asking for trouble mm -hmm. and stress and just don't do it so either you either decide on a max of okay we're having 200 people um and that's our max or you decide on the money because mm -hmm. um there are a lot of things that don't really factor into budget like you're you're still going to have the same amount of florals unless yep. it's centerpieces yes you're still going to have the same videographer the same photographer some same some of the budgets don't move but when it comes to decor or invitations your stationery food your food and, and that every plate right. adds up 100%. so 10 another table of eight or ten can cost you another five or six hundred dollars yeah. and you just mm -hmm. keep maybe more yep. so there are some things in your budget that don't flex. And then there are other things that can really exponentially mm -hmm. grow quickly. Mm -hmm. So you want to decide, you know, do we invite all families or do we just invite couples? Is it just adults? And have those hard conversations before you meet with your professionals, because we'll make a whatever you want happen um, and be honest with us. So if you're sitting at the table with us and you say, you know, I, I have an $85,000 budget, but you're bringing us Pinterest items pictures mm -hmm. that number one aren't real yes. Yes. You know? that was a hard learn for me scrolling through instagram looking at oh Lori, i like this she's like honey amanda mm -hmm. amanda there's no mountains in china no. right yeah. Yeah. Did you just draw one for you yeah. Yeah. No. Things don't just suspend in the air like that yeah. so anyhow so being realistic about that because if you do want certain things there's a budget for some things right mm -hmm. and not that you can't get it i never ever tell people they can't get it I just, we just have to move mm. the numbers around somewhere and it's too. totally possible. Yeah. Um, as a general rule out there, people ask me how much do we budget per person? John and I have kind of had a disagreement on this, but we we've gone back and forth. It really depends on where, when, and, and your wedding is, but really it it's about a hundred, $150 a person is what you want to budget. Now, That's what we did. I when I talk about that, most people think food, florals, um, right. Like all mm -hmm. of that kind of stuff, um, stuff their like favors, yeah. whatever your stationary, all the things where you have lots of pieces to something. Um, but yeah, that's around the right budget. So you can budget around most weddings are around 24 to 30,000 for a small one. Mm -hmm. And then you can go up to 85 to a hundred for the bigger ones. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. and it goes fast, yeah. it <laughs> um, but you can, 
you can budget. And then also depends on if you're going to have cocktails and appetizers, you're looking at about 12 to $20 a person for that portion of yes. it. And then you've got your late night, your late night your food pizza, truck or your late yeah. night pizza. Yeah. You're looking at another 24 to $30. Oh my gosh. Truck. And if it's a Portuguese wedding, look out, go, <laughs> right? A seafood buffet. That's what my oh friend my did. God. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah, an hour and a half after you've had yeah, a five course meal. This whole I know. Buffet. That's so <laughs> crazy that she did that. It's awesome. It is I mean, awesome. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm sure her parents did. Well. I need two EpiPens. For yeah. sure. like, um... <laughs> but in terms of food budget, I do get this question a lot. So how much does a plate of food cost? <laughs> Whatever you want it to right. cost. Yeah. Right. How much does a car cost, right? Yeah. It's right. Like, it's what do you want? want. Yeah. Um, but when you're looking at those pieces for people, yeah, you're looking at chairs. If you have it on a private property, you have to rent, you know, 80 yes. shivari chairs as opposed to 150 shivari chairs it's a big difference mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. all of those little pieces add up and the details like i'm saying you don't think of these things when you're planning your wedding right so it's all in the details right right great. and every centerpiece is another 30 dollars or whatever yeah. that is so um, but as a general rule try to budget between 100 150 per person in terms of the material things that you know kind of are that they take, they don't take with them kind of thing. And there's all the hidden costs, right? At like, the end too, like, you know, like all the, the tipping and all the other stuff that you have to do, right? And all those, yeah, all that the extra tequila cutting. you had to yeah, buy, yeah. right? <laughs> well, my uncle wanted this fancy bottle of vodka. Don't get me started on that. So we had to order that special order. So all the little details that kind of happen towards the end of the wedding, right? So, well, and I think what, I know where the surprises happen because I hear about it three days mm -hmm. later. The surprises happen when you planned a wedding up until 11 o'clock at night or 12 o'clock, and then you get into it and you're like, will you stay longer? Let's, and you get to a wedding mm -hmm. that goes till two in the morning. <laughs> well, between, a, you know, midnight and right. two in the morning. Yeah. Those expenses. Cause now you're ordering yeah, pizza extra. in exactly. people have to eat or you have a shuttle now, yeah. um, or the, you have the bar tab that keeps going. So don't be surprised by those costs. You mm -hmm. need to have a good $10,000 where you're just kind of, you can play with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, there, and then you need your dress. You need your parents' dresses. Oh, you need yes. your, your suits. Like suits, all those puppies, things that. The socks, the shoes, everything. The, what do you wear to your rehearsal dinner? Yeah. Where do you go for your rehearsal dinner? All of those things. Those just, things that I, we, I completely personally forgot about until right. like a week before I was like, oh man, I need a dress for the rehearsal dinner and my husband yeah. needs a shirt. And so all the little details that all add up with mm -hmm. in your budget, right? Or the food trays that you have to have yes. in the morning. So right. eats. Exactly. Yeah. Or even like the, when you send out the thank yous and then the mail that can cost that mm -hmm. all and contributes to your budget as well. Things that you don't really think of. Who pays for the wedding? Who pays? Um, right now, uh, the majority, a lot of couples mm -hmm. paying for their own weddings right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there is no hard and fast rule anymore. There's no traditional no, bride I room, really think bride's really family. Yeah. Yeah. As a yeah. father of three daughters, I'm <laughs> so grateful that that has changed. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Very thankful that, you know, we, me, Miguel and I paid for our wedding. So, um, so that came into factor with our budget as well. Right. So you have to think of that too. Mm -hmm. Are you paying for the wedding on your, on your own, or do you have you know, generous family that's right. going to contribute as well. Mm -hmm. And the reason I brought that up is because that's a hard question to ask. And for mm -hmm. a lot of families, mm -hmm. they so let's get married. And they're like, okay, how are we, how are we going to do this? Yes. <laughs> and I think the days are not all long gone where they assume a parent's going to pay for this. I think it's a real partnership between yeah. all the groups. Mm -hmm. And you have to have, just like you said earlier, you have to have that, that tough conversation early and said, Here's what our expectations are. Here's where our maxes are. And here's what, you know, we can expect for, as parents. Here's what we're going to contribute or not. Mm -hmm. or... And from experience, I know that where the stress comes in is when couples don't have a plan. Yes. When they just start spending or they're hitting, you know, the thrift shops or the marketplace and they're just buying, 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 and they don't have a plan. And next thing they know, they don't know where the $5,000 went. 
Right. And yeah. it, we all work so hard for our money. Mm-hmm. Um, no one knows more than me. <laughs> I am Portuguese. I yeah. say, <laughs> right, Chris? <laughs> I am a saver. I like to make it and I have a hard time spending it. But what I find is couples coming to me six months into it and they say, you know, we don't know where that $12,000 went. Well, I know where it went mm-hmm. because you went to all these stores and something had a, someone had a sale and yeah. it doesn't match anymore. You changed your theme. So I can't tell you enough. Get those checklists. Those those timelines for everyone in the, in the group today, you're going to get our timeline mm-hmm. and my checklist that I give to my couples, mm-hmm. um, so that you stay on track and just kind of know where your spending is. Um, that's where people get surprised. And that's why weddings get a bad rap <laughs> because they say weddings are so expensive. Yeah. Um, they, they cost money, but they don't have to be expensive. They can Which, be whatever you want it to be budget wise. Right? Yeah. I think we saw that in the last three years. Yeah, you can get you can have an eight thousand dollar wedding if you really yeah, want my to. My friend right? had she's Portuguese. She got married during COVID. She had fifty people. She still had the buffet, but she had <laughs> fifty people only, and because she got married in COVID, and man, she was so happy that she spent X amount of dollars instead of the hundred thousand dollar wedding that she was right. supposed to have, right? So right, and then have that party later. Exactly. Or yeah. Right? So um, I guess what we're trying to say is just be realistic. Hundred percent. Um, and trust trust your professionals. So if a professional says to you, "Look, I'm really thinking you need to go with this package. It's more bang for your buck. You're going to get what you want." on the day of your wedding, mm-hmm. you're going to say that was the best money I ever spent, right? Um, right. On your planner or mm-hmm. your coordinator or yeah. your photography package. And you might say at the time I was nickel and diming, or I was thinking about that hundred dollars, but on the day of my wedding, that was the best hundred right. I ever spent because I took it from somewhere else. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we're just saying, just be realistic and listen to the professionals. 100%. We, we do hundreds of these a year. I wish I did a hundred of these yeah. a year. Lori does. <laughs> well, you do. I know you do. But, uh, right on. Yeah. Okay. Um, the last thing I want to say as part of your budget is people all, always forget this stuff is your, your insurance, your PAL insurance, your marriage license, uh, all of those paperwork, your special occasions permits, they all cost liquor money. License. Your liquor license, yes. you're like 130 here, 75 there. Um, so like I said, budget about, um, about, I would say about five hundred dollars um, for all those little licenses and things you need, parking permits, and you'd be surprised if mm-hmm. the venue yeah, doesn't does. have a parking and you need to use the parkade instead. Um, so talk to who wherever you're getting married about those little things that, that your guests don't get caught off guard or get parking tickets. Like I know it sounds silly, but this is Details. what people are <laughs> talking about. You talk, you talk about. I'm telling you, <laughs> yes, right? you get yes. the subway to deliver and you don't realize there's a delivery exactly. fee. Exactly, budget about five. $500 for all of those special event insurances, I call them because they will come up. And as a coordinator, I always ask for money in a, in an envelope. envelope for that reason. Yes. Yes. I believe at your wedding, yes. it, it, I need to use yeah, it. Exactly. And permits like this yeah. is, um, uh, your photographer is not responsible for getting you permits to the distillery or to any of the conservation areas. It's totally up to you. And then, mm-hmm. yeah. And everybody is charging permit fees now. So if you get caught in an area without a permit, yeah, like the fines even yes. even greater. But if you want to get married on the beach, yeah. there's yeah. permits for the beach, right? For our tiny weddings. Yeah. So don't don't just show up at the camera and then assume that everything will be okay. Mm-hmm. It's it won't be. And then the photographer, well, you should have this conversation with them ahead of time. Will assume that the couple is arranged for the permit. The permit will say, "No, you're the photographer. It's, it's your job." Well. It's, we didn't talk about it. It's yeah, not my job no. and it's not my job to pay for it. So no. um, have those conversations. And if you're going off site, if you're going anywhere, especially a conservation area in Chatham, Kent, um, Windsor, I'm not sure, but you will need a permit mm-hmm. fee. Um, you need to pay the permit fee. Yeah. So that's all part of your budget, right? You think mm-hmm. of all the fun stuff of planning a wedding and you think about the dress and the food and this and that, and you don't realize that all the stuff <laughs> you have to right. put the things in behind in place first, or there will be no wedding. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So bad. That was that's budget good. went well. Budget yeah. went very well. Any questions about budget? Put it right in the chat and we'll answer it for you. Okay. And then we are going to can. Can you talk about tipping and how much we should allocate per vendor? That's a great question, Sandra. 
So your typical tipping is between 18 to 20%. Mm -hmm. That's the going rate now. Um, it's always at your discretion for sure. Um, but talk to, you know, a professional that you feel really close to whoever you've hired. Sandra, that would be me. Um, <laughs> but it's between 18 to 20% right now off the, your, your total bill. Mm -hmm. So, and sometimes yeah. they include that in like the venue and stuff. They included that with us. Um, mm -hmm. But everything else is on your end for sure. Yeah. And you can tip anyone that you want. Mm -hmm. um, you really can. If everyone, someone's gone above and beyond for you, or maybe spent a little extra time um, that they didn't budget mm -hmm. in your package or whatnot, you, it's at your discretion for yeah. sure. Um, but have that planned out ahead mm -hmm. of time. Some Especially that, that percentage. I, I, I don't know that there's a photographer who's ever got a 20% tip. I mean, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, it's more like the caterers yeah, and, like, and, yeah. the, and the drivers, the transportation, the service. The transportation, definitely. I personally think, I think everyone deserves in the service industry. Mm -hmm. If you've gone above and beyond, you deserve something. But it's definitely, I think everyone charges fairly too for their time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like it's yeah. unexpected, I don't think, for photographers or any of them. No, I not at all but uh if you stay around the 20 percent mark right. you'd be right within range yeah now unless you showed up at your photographer's door two weeks later with a bottle of tequila amanda or gibson <laughs> or, or whiskey <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's okay too uh, i would not say no that. tequila into canada too. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't say no to that. <laughs> but um but i hope that answers your question a little bit sooner but at the Photographer, videographer, I can only speak for us. They, it's it's not necessary. Um, and and when we have received um, a tip, it's usually been fifty or hundred dollars a couple times a year. It's 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 nice, not necessary, but um, but certainly your efficiency, your mm -hmm. uh, limo, mm -hmm. um, wait service caterer, or anybody who's doing some, yes that's it thank you yeah 100 because i know that like my bridesmaids so i was generous enough to pay for my bridesmaids hair and makeup that was their present for being in my wedding and forgot about tipping until like the very end so i'm like oh. stressed trying to find this cash to give to the girls to tip so make sure you accommodate that in your budget as well if you're paying for hair and makeup otherwise just remind your bridesmaids hey don't forget to tip so mm -hmm. very important because i was running around trying to figure that out last minute so Okay. Mm -hmm. Good yeah. question. I hope that that Good helps, question. Andrew. If you have a specific request for a specific vendor, you can just drop it in the chat or just ask us privately. Um, okay. Timeline time. Time for timeline. Yeah. So we, do we need a we need a song for time for timeline? <laughs> time Why don't you sing, John? Time, <laughs> time for timeline. Our own jingle. Yes. <laughs> okay. So when it comes to the timeline, um, oh, love it. You said um, that about the last one. No, well, well, that's I'm being biased. <laughs> this is my actual favorite photo. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, here's some tips, and um, I'll talk about this a little bit, and then Lori's going to interject. She's going to have some questions, like, "What do you mean by be a Navy SEAL?" <laughs> um, <laughs> but whenever we talk to clients, and and Lori is the same way when she's um, when she's doing a timeline, we always start in the middle. Mm -hmm. Like, what time is your ceremony? And then we work outwards from there. So ceremony, then we start planning all the things after that. And then we work backwards and start and then do all the things before that. Um, let me find my slide here. Oops, wrong slide. There. There we go. There we go. Keep the schedule. What did you mean by that? Keep your schedule through speeches and dinner. Um, so really important that when you're building your own timeline, you're writing it out, is that you keep the schedule moving forward. So I, I always call it the program, mm -hmm. <laughs> keep the program moving. Mm -hmm. So it really important that someone is, is delegated to moving things quicker, building moving things back, um, trying to make sure that everything is working in tandem with each other. So when you've got your, your first dance, when do speeches happen? When is, um, cocktails? And then the first, uh, the first meal is the first plate is served. Um, are you working with the, the kitchen? Does something have to go quicker, faster? So the food is hot. It's so important like that 
that is such a basic part of the evening that people often forget about. They just say, we're going to have dinner, then we're going to have speeches, then we're going to do dance. Well, it doesn't always work that way because sometimes, sometimes some bridesmaids have speeches that are nine minutes long. Yes. <laughs> so I'm just saying. And then there are some that are, they think they're going to talk and then they're done in two and you're like, oh no, well, the salad's not out yet. Yes. So um, what I mean about that is that keep everything going, the program going and be able to to shift the program a little bit. So then if the speeches are too short, then we're going to have all four people do their speeches now. Yes. And then that just moves it along because you don't want your music starting at 10 o'clock at night. No. You no, paid no, for it no to way. start on time. We started, what, 8 o'clock? Yeah. 30? We were yeah. Really yeah. And went late. <laughs> but in terms of planning in the middle of your ceremony too, is I like to build it forward. I like to build it back. So what time's your ceremony? Okay, it's at four o'clock. Well, who needs to know the, the two hours before it's your photographer, your videographer, your makeup people. Mm -hmm. So when I'm working with them at eight o'clock in the morning, right, I'm making sure that yes. they've got you ready for your first look. So there's like three or four different kind of segments of the day. And then after the ceremony, everything moves super fast. So fast. Yes. Lights the so candles, fast. who moves the chairs, mm -hmm. is the catering, are they ready to go for with appetizers and cocktails? Um, is the transportation out there? Everything goes super fast. So your timeline has to be literally to the minute mm -hmm. after that. Then we bring you back for your grand entrance and then everything slows down. Yes. Yes. Right. right. It's like everyone knows what they're supposed to do. And that's so important with the timeline. Mm -hmm. And those of you planning your wedding, you are going to get this question. I just had, a, I was talking to a couple last week and they were already getting questions six months before friends and family. What can I do? Where do I need to be? Um, what, you know, where are we getting ready? Blah, blah, blah. And it's stressful. It is. And brides are coming to me saying like, I don't know what to tell them. And you can't tell them anything yet. Yeah. It's too early. Mm -hmm. It's too early. So um, timeline basics, there's nothing really basic about a timeline, except it has to go all revolve around the couple and where you are yes. all through the day. Yes. So if you're falling behind, we fall behind. And if you're moving forward, yeah. we kind of do this dance with the couple. Yes. And we're always, and mm -hmm. as professionals, we're always texting each other. Where yes. are you? How far are you? Yeah. Is she is she happy? Yes. <laughs> oh, a little bit goes. I'll even share my. Yeah. They drunk already. Yes. yes. Well, I even share my location on my phone with you. When yes, you do. Together, so that you know where we are, how close we are to the venue. And we know that there's, there's this nexus of time and it's usually at, you know, five or five 30 between when the venue coordinator takes over yes. and when, you know, you, we bring everybody back to the venue at say five 30 for the grand reveal of the room. If they're doing a receiving line, then the, then the venue coordinators activated yes. it's like, okay, now they, and they have their plan. And if it's a, one of the bigger venues, they are, on time they're yes, they all pro uh ambassador one of them like yep. they just da, 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 da. Sure. um they know they know what's going on they know if you're showing up at 5 30 they're serving plates at 6 15 mm -hmm. and and what venue coordinators really appreciate is when because they're main focus is to make sure you have the most amazing time at their venue. They want For you to sure. tell everyone about their venue and they want to do their best with the food and the service and mm -hmm. the, whatever the decor, whatever's there. Mm -hmm. And what they love is that quick message from a photographer or a word coordinator that says, Hey, we're 15 minutes early. And it's just so you don't catch them off guard mm -hmm. and you don't even I won't even tell you anything that I don't want to know all yeah. anything. John and I know, and I'm like, you know, hold on five minutes kind of thing. We're not ready yes. or this and that. So yeah, so that's really important that this that it's like a program. I always kind of think of it like um when you go to see, you know, a Broadway show. Everyone knows when you're sitting in the seat mm -hmm. that it's not just the actors. Yes putting on a show right. that there was practice that there was there's uh, stage hands mm -hmm. there's lighting crew yep. there's all these people that have to work together and people sitting in in your guest chairs know that oh, and they know that there's so many moving parts to the day um that it it takes a lot of coordination so your timeline so i know a lot of you are saying where is it where is it when do i give it to people you don't really know mm -hmm. until about a month before 
So that I'm going to tell that's you. That's when we did ours, right? It's it exactly a month, a month before. before. Exactly. Well, you have it, your, your highlights, right? Yeah. You, you know, know your mile, like, your big milestones. Yeah. But, but then your RCPs start coming in and this, and that shifts things so much, yeah. right? Yep. So who's the queen, queen of England? So here is the, so the queen of England, it will be our bride and groom or, or groom and groom or bride and bride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Things come to you. Do not go and get a darn thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just sit there on your throne all day long <laughs> and let things come to you. Because the minute the the bride or groom gets up to do something, you're losing time. Yes. Don't go and get your hair done. Let them come to you. And there's an exception. And you were it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, let you know if you're getting ready in a hotel, have your hair and makeup come to the hotel rather than you going with four or five or six people to a salon mm -hmm. and invariably somebody's going to be late or you're taking two or three cars just have them come to you then you're together and you you guys did that you had this amazing social experience you had mm -hmm. you know a couple little uh ceremonies that you got that you yeah. did that morning and you were yeah. all together there was no stress everybody showed up at whatever time that was like seven, seven in the morning <laughs> uh, and then we all left on time at uh one yeah one thirty. So that so be the queen, and the same goes for you know the other side too. The the grooms like just let the stuff come to you. Don't yes. go in it because and the guys are the worst because no. oh, somebody's always doing a beer run yes. or they're just let the stuff come to you. Mm -hmm. And if you can't, then you're become a Navy SEAL. And what that means, if you're going to travel, travel together. Mm -hmm. And that's what I meant with you being having being the exception. You did go to the dry parlor for um, yeah. hair and makeup, but you all went together, yeah. right? So Navy SEAL, no one's left behind. Yeah. Um, you all got on the bus at one o'clock to go to the first look, yeah. and then you all traveled there. Then the guys mm -hmm. got on the bus, and then you, we all went to the venue together. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you can't have everything come to you, then at least don't separate no, don't. I can't all, tell ever. you how many times I've done a head count on shuttles. Oh, Jesus. Right. You have to. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Right. Um, one of the timelines that I like to add in is when and where should your creative team eat? So your professionals. Right. And I don't know. I I have a I think I'm one of the rare Yes, you are. Rare professionals or coordinators who do this, but we did it with Amanda. Yeah, and I'm so and, glad that you asked. Right, and I just it's just been experience over time is that if any time you can, and if it's possible with your venue, um, is that let your photographers and your videographers eat with the cup at the same time as the couple. Right. Generally, when you when we we usually sit at the last table, so whether you have 15 tables or 26 tables, um, we need to be fed and and ready to go when the couple's ready to go mm -hmm. there's nothing worse than the couple having their food we not getting our food especially photographers mm -hmm. you rarely eat or your food is cold or yeah. heaven forbid it gets taken away yeah <laughs> but as a coordinator i do not let that happen yeah. but by the time they get back the food is cold mm -hmm. right um or they miss uh, they miss a, an entree or something uh, right so i can encourage you couples if you can push this forward with your venue is that when the head table and the parents get fed, then feed your vendors at the same time. Yeah, so right. we're watching. So when you're done and you're ready to hear a speech, we have also eaten too. And right. then we can just Not be there right. at the moment. Yeah. Cause we need to be in sync, right? Yes. Uh, there's nothing worse than, well, there's a beautiful sunset. I want to ready to go take photos. But you know, you're like, oh, just had my, I got my soup. Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, or and not a, this isn't all venues. Some um, they stick you the, the video and the photographers in the back room mm -hmm. and give them a sandwich. Oh, cool. You know, it's like they do. What? It's like we don't we can't hear what's going on. We don't. Um, you know, we're not, we don't see the speeches. It's just like, well, what are we supposed to do over here? Right. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's in our contract and it's in almost every other photographer, videographer's contract. I know mm -hmm. to be in the same room at least. Um, and I'm always asked where to sit, just put your wedding people at one table. Yeah. Yes. Uh, That's cause it's a long day. Uh, sometimes we talk, sometimes we don't, we're just sitting there just like, 
Uh, oh, but you know, we're downloading cards, recharging batteries. Like we're, yes, you know, we're a social day for everybody. Yeah. Sometimes you yeah. Have to put your videographers and photographers near an outlet. Yes. Yes. It's one of those little details that drive me crazy is mm-hmm. that they come with this plethora of equipment and last thing you want is your battery right. or something happening. So put them where they're comfortable and they can set up shop yes. is what I like to call it. Um, so important, but it's one of those de- details that people forget about. Right. Details. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, okay. And the big question is first look or no. First look, please. Yes, yes. Um, now I did have, we do have a question that oh. does say um, that they're planning a, uh, a first, planning a, a wedding without a first look. What's the ideal timeline look like? And we'll, I'll talk about that in a moment, but I am going to try and sell the first look mm-hmm. idea. So first. important, guys. So Amanda has been raving about it all night, how mm-hmm. important it is. But some of the benefits are it definitely calms the nerves. It, and I mean, it front loads a lot of the photography into the beginning of the day. It makes for a very busy, logistically challenging morning. But if you got your milestones, you know, you do this, you do that, you do that. But then as soon as the ceremony is over, okay. you go into cocktail hour mm-hmm. and then you go right into your party. And you're not being pulled away for, for, for more photos. For more photos. Yeah. Um, now, when you had your first look at the park, Oh, thank you. <laughs> when you had your first look at the park, and let me just, uh, so here, this is it. Yeah, right there it is. So the, there's Miguel waiting for you. Yeah. Um, little tap on the shoulder yeah. and ta-da. Yeah, hand on my butt, of course. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember Mike uh, being like, really, Miguel? Yeah, that was it. It's our typical, that's our hug we so, do every time. <laughs> But I, I'll never forget the like he was so nervous. He was so yes. he had this amazing just vibe about him. He was so excited. He could see you mm-hmm. uh, uh, just your aura, right? Yes. And I hear from a lot of couples that they don't that they want to have that that same feeling um yeah. at the, down the aisle. Mm-hmm. But I saw his face when you came down the aisle, at ambassador, and it was still the same. Still the same, exactly. Right? Less jitters and less nerves, and I more think. and more present in that moment while my bride's walking down the aisle right yes. now, right? Yeah. Um, you front load everything. So um, let's go. Let me go back to my slide here again. All the photos are taken before the ceremony, so your family your wedding party, everything. So they can go right from the wedding, right from the ceremony, right into, mm-hmm. into the event. Especially this is important for, for I think, for parents and some of the extended family that, you know, in so many cases, you have people coming from all over, all over the world. Like you yes. had family from, 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 Spain, from Europe California. come over that. They want to visit and to hang out with them during cocktail hour, which is usually cocktail two hours, really. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if you're pulling them out for photos for half an hour, 45 minutes, then you're then you're co-opting their family time. Yeah, you're missing the, out on all that. The time. reason why they've come to, to see to, you in the first place. So right. we want you to walk, you know, after you say I do and you walk down the aisle together everybody goes yes. enjoys cocktail and mingles i'll take you for 15 minutes for some photos of you guys together mm-hmm. and then you can enjoy it and, and be part of that day so just i'm a big big fan of the first look yes uh, for so many reasons um and you agree right yeah it definitely helps with the timeline of the day 100%. and it, it gets everything going a little earlier yeah. especially if your ceremony is not until four o'clock um you know you're you're in your hair and makeup you're, you're getting ready at seven o'clock in the morning and to yes. wait till four o'clock. That's a long day. Um, your, your makeup pretty much needs to be retouched. Well, that's also what I wanted to touch on too, is that having a first look, it's, it's so great because your hair, your makeup, everything's fresh, right? And you get to take those photos and at the ceremony, like, I don't know about any other brides, but I was bawling my eyes out. Right. So I'm glad that I got those photos with my husband, just those ones with John, um, before I was a hot mess, you right. know what I mean? Right. So I think that really, right. And you spend so much well. time planning and you're in your dress yeah. should only be in your dress from four o'clock to midnight. Yes. 
what you might as well extend that as much as you can. Cause I, I know that it doesn't matter how early you start your makeup. Mm-hmm. You do, you spend so much time during the day, getting ready for yeah. the day that yeah. just get the day started. Yes. Like, like why yes. wait? No, nope, right? not for me. <laughs> it was great the way it was. I loved it. So speaking of starting the day, so here is a sample timeline for a first look. And this is very close to yours, Amanda. Mm-hmm. So again, we start at the middle with a four o'clock ceremony. So whenever there's a first look, in general, I will back off three hours from the ceremony to when we have the first look. So that takes us to, to one o'clock for the first look. Mm-hmm. So one o'clock, we do the first look. Now, the, the couple caveats, travel. We mm-hmm. want, you know, this is not, this is close travel. Everything's within close proximity, mm-hmm. um, like no hour and a half drives anywhere. So we had your first look at one o'clock. Mm-hmm. Then we, right after that, we did your wedding party and then you and Miguel yep. all in that, uh, that span of about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Yep. Then you made the the incredibly smart decision Mm -hmm. to have your family come to the same location where we had the first look and we did all the family photos Mm -hmm. before before the even the ceremony and the timing was such that by the time we wrapped up all the family photos your your ceremony was at four Mm o'clock they just stepped around the corner to over to ambassador and it was there Close proximity is always great. Yeah, so, <laughs> so great. <laughs> we, you know, we had allocated about thirty minutes of travel to there, and then about fifteen minutes around the, to get back to Ambassador. Yeah. So three hours in general from your ceremony time is is where I would do the first look. Then before the first look, there's another three hours for the the guys and then the girls. Now I'm going to say that we've done enough weddings that. We're saying bride and groom, but mm-hmm. it's bride and bride, groom and groom. No. Um, just in for these examples, we've used uh, bride and groom. But I will tell you, uh, for all the uh, for all the groom and groom weddings, we do, <laughs> I'm pointing to my screen, and nobody can really see me pointing. For all the groom, groom yes. for all the groom groom weddings I've done, I all the guys have gotten ready together at the same time in the mm-hmm. same room. They've never separated like a bride and a groom, um, which was great. That's nice. I love yeah. That time yeah. So we, uh, so uh, the last one, Blake and Mark, we, they got ready at retro suites. So we were able to spend that whole prep time with them, Very cool. which was nice. Yeah. And then they introduced themselves um, to their, to the rest of the wedding. Oh, cool. Right? So it was very nice. So um, generally, whether it's um, groom, groom, bride, bride, bride and groom, it's three hours before the first look that I would start the prep photos. And that can, I generally, if it's guys, it'll be an hour. And then the brides will be an hour and a half to two hours, depending on how close we are. Mm -hmm. The guys, we don't, we don't need a lot of time with them because generally I will say, um, be in your jacket, have your jacket ready, shirt and pants on. So that when I come, you can put your jacket on, do your tie. I'll take some formal portraits of you guys, a couple group shots of you together. And then, then we're out the door. That usually takes about 45 minutes, unless they're struggling with boutonnieres. <laughs> <laughs> or, right? ties. or ties. Or, 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 or bow ties, or right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, tie a tie mm-hmm. right so that span from your ceremony to when we start photography is six hours backed off three hours for your first look and then three hours to your um to your prep photos generally that works uh, and then your hair and mark- makeup would start mm-hmm. you know three hours before that if yes. not more Right. Well, depending on how big your wedding party is too, right? I had a very large wedding party. We mm-hmm. had eight people on both sides. So we had to start early. But if you have a couple of girls, you could probably start around like nine or eight. Yeah, right? you, you can gauge about for makeup about 30 to 40 minutes per person mm-hmm. and then about an, a little more than that for the bride. Yes. Um, and then for as I say makeup and then hair is about 35 minutes per mm-hmm. bridesmaid yep. and about 50 minutes for the bride. Yeah. Right. So this is, if you look at the sample timeline for a first look, and then this next one is no first look, it looks, the no first look is less complicated 
but mm -hmm. there's it's only because the the milestones are are, are laid out mm -hmm. and uh so uh ceremonies at four cocktail hour right away um then we do the bride and groom for 15 minutes return everybody to cocktail hour mm -hmm. grand entrance and first dance before dinner what do we think about that uh, always so for me, i just wanted to get it out of the way and my husband's mm -hmm. not a very good or uh, not a very not he's not a very good he just doesn't like to be a center of attention i do um but no. he doesn't so we wanted to get that done and out of the way so yeah. right. and that was Lori's suggestion as well and i'm glad that she suggested that for yeah. us anything that you can do to get people moving after dinner as fast as possible yes. which means speeches yeah, dinner. through dinner 100%. well the other reason we do the first dance first is because that's when you have the most captive audience mm -hmm. i have done i would say a handful of weddings where um the, they insisted it was done after the dinner and the and the dessert and by then the bar is open people again people are in the bathroom <laughs> yeah. they're gone for a smoke they're yeah. off they're just off and then for a hundred person wedding you might have 30 people actually watching your first yeah. dance so we always do the first dance first because you have the grand entrance coming in everyone's ready for the food mm -hmm. so everyone's in their spots usually the bar is closed for the first hour yep. um, but everyone's ready to go so you have everyone witnesses your first dance yep. and, and they're excited regret it. And, and they yeah. are they're excited exactly yeah. right best decision um okay so then um no first look and this is with a 3 p.m ceremony so 3 p.m ceremony again backing off three hours so again this is all very general um, depending on how much driving there is between uh, partner one, partner two, um, I would start with the first group at 12, then the next one at one o'clock. And the reason why that we get a little bit more time with the bride and her crew is because we shoot the details, like the dress, the shoes, the jewelry. We get all three rings with um, with the bride. So, you know, doing those details in the flat lay, that can take, you know, 15 to 20 minutes just to do that. So we want a little bit more time. Uh, and girls just don't move as fast as guys. No, they don't. Guys right? put on a suit and do their hair. Yeah, and they're done. And, they're done. <laughs> well, and then quite often they'll take off their suits yes. uh, oh, after we leave, exactly, right? Yeah. And away we go. Um, so then ceremony, um, right after the ceremony, we'll do the family photos. Then they can go off to the reception venue if it's in a different place, get into cocktail hour. While cocktail hour is going on, I'm photographing the wedding party and then the bride and groom. And this is why people like the first look because there's no intimate time yeah, with you and your husband. That's right. So, um, and it goes by fast, you guys. Like yeah. I'm telling you, like I blinked and the, it right. was done. So, one o'clock. Now, I, well, I changed this one up a little bit because when there's a one o'clock ceremony, it is usually because it's at a church. So, church ceremony at one o'clock. I added a full hour uh, for church. Longer if you're Catholic and are having um, uh, communion in church. It's a long day. It's a, it's a day. very long day. Usually these we uh, big weddings like this are 14 hour days for us. Woofty. Then mm -hmm. uh, nine o'clock with the fellas, 10 o'clock with the, with, the, um, with the bride and her girls. Uh, or uh, slice and dice it any way you like. Uh, if it's uh, groom and groom. Uh, we would be together all uh, at nine o'clock. Um, but actually, every bride and bride wedding, they've been separate. I don't it's know. Such a girl you... thing, eh? It's yeah. Such a girl thing. Yeah, I've never had a bride bride, bride wedding together. where they've gotten ready at the same time. Mm. Hmm. Um, okay. Then get into the church, family formals, um, get into cocktail hour. And this is where there's usually a large receiving line. We have to uh, allocate time for that, mm -hmm. usually an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, this is usually when it's at a one of the bigger halls. Mm -hmm. I get that question a lot about receiving lines, whether that people should have a receiving line or not. And um, that really is a personal uh, choice. Mm -hmm. However, if you're tight on timeline, I always say it's not necessary. Yeah. So what we like to do, we like to be a little more creative during the reception. And we liked memory, the TikTok that we did. Oh my before. gosh, yeah. So we can find, we we'll definitely find ways for you to interact mm -hmm. with your guests during the reception. Yeah. So definitely talk to your planner about that because um, it's a way better and more fun way to get your photographs right. and say hello to everybody. Because right after the ceremony, 
you really need to get moving. You need to get mm -hmm. into those photographs mm -hmm. and a receiving line. You have to bank on an hour right. and at least, at least an hour. Yep. Um, and it just, cause people, it just doesn't move along quickly yeah. at all, no matter how hard you try. And then you got uncle Joe sitting there telling you stories. Yeah. And all <laughs> kinds of stuff. No, what I've seen a few times. And I really like this was when we couldn't get the bride and groom back for the receiving line, the parents still had it. Oh, which I really right. like because yeah. they are hosting the event. Yeah. So let them mm -hmm. do the receiving line and let that them do the visiting and then the bride and groom will still do their grand entrance. Oh, that's good. So there's three examples. Um, if anybody else has um, a, a specific example, I know Aaron <laughs> asked about golden hour. So Aaron, I'm going to assume that you want a golden hour photos and not a golden hour ceremony. So in September, the sun is going to set around eight o'clock, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. In September? Yeah. So let's say 8 p.m. So that means yes. we want to be out photographing, doing golden hour photos that changes your timeline quite around a bit, eh? seven. Yes, it it really does. depends on what month you Oh, married, very much honestly. so. And that's why fall is great because yeah. uh, yes. it does line up really well with dinner service mm -hmm. uh, being wrapped up or, you know, maybe they're just desserts happening and then I can grab them and yeah. take them out for uh for sunset photos in the summer i usually have to wait till like you know nine o'clock <laughs> it's like nine o'clock but that it was Sean's so like, worth it tequila geez guys <laughs> it's just it was so worth it winter weddings it's happening during dinner if it's at 30 oh, yeah. right yeah um so that means that um for that golden hour we are going to want to be doing photos around sevens to seven fifteen, which means your dinner service would want to be around six o'clock maybe a little bit earlier uh if your ceremony and um your reception are all there then we do that at six o'clock then we might have to take you out uh during the dessert time for um for your receiving line or i'm uh, sorry for your sunset photos okay yeah um, we did have this question about maximizing the use of their getting ready location right that was one of the first questions that came in to us this week right so so maximizing use of, of uh, so when, how do you maximize the use of wherever you're getting ready? So whether it's in a hotel or it's at your house or you've rented a space or sometimes um, venues will have a special bridal suite yeah. for you or what whatnot, um, maximizing use of it is just keeping everything in one place. Like mm -hmm. we said, have all your bridal party there with you, have everything delivered there, make that your storage space as well, your go-to space um, where you're going to keep all your personal items and whatnot. Most venues will have a space that actually locks up, mm -hmm. but how do you maximize that is, is really that is like bring everyone to you don't just be the use, queen of england don't yes. just use it as your your stomp your stop and go spot enjoy the whole day mm -hmm. um and making sure that it's a space that's really um is good for getting ready because it's not cramped and that you yes. have a place to hang your dress. Mm -hmm. yes. That is one of the things that I know photographers, it's like, where do we hang the dress for mm -hmm. those photos and where do we keep everything organized? Um, I think that was one of the first yeah. questions. And there was a second part to that. Well, the other thing is if you're, depending on what the location is, if the guys could be there and the girls, like the so many times we'll see the guys on one floor and then the girls on another mm -hmm. or out at, um, more house they have like the, the place for the guys out there mm -hmm. so you know just capitalize on that and use that as a as a sound stage for your photography right mm -hmm. yeah your timing of the day is really important while you might think you want to have you know your photos on a beach and then we're going to go to this my favorite park and i just had this conversation with a couple three days ago actually one wanted to be on a bridge and the other one wanted the park and one of the and they in the and they wanted to accommodate each other mm -hmm. and they were being so cute in our consult but i was like come on guys like that's three hours of yeah. travel time mm -hmm. and gas and money and time and and that's a lot of finagling like, we'll do it if you want but that's where you have to have those conversations and for sure. you know and figure that out so that's how you maximize mm -hmm. that time as well so okay. uh the time between the ceremony and the reception we kind of talked about that a little bit but specifically um like two hours minimum like three is better and it all depends on does the venue need how much time do they need to flip the room and do you have to get out of the way yes 
So that's really important that you ask. A lot of people forget to ask is if you're at a venue and your ceremony is in the same place where the reception tables will be, we're not talking about a venue that's big enough where the ceremony is on one side and the venue is already set up, but the reception's on the other side. But if you literally have to flip the room, you're looking at a good hour and a half to two hours where they need your guests to leave. So we did have a question about that this week is what do you do in that time? How do you keep your guests busy? Mm -hmm. If you're on a private property there's going to be another section where they're playing lawn games or you might have a secondary bar set up somewhere mm -hmm. and you're actually moving them to a different part of the property or maybe a different shed mm -hmm. or like a barn um, while we're flipping the space um, if you're at a venue you might uh, utilize some of the bars downtown or a coffee shop mm -hmm. and you might actually set up something with those owners where they're having you know like a, a brewery tour or they're yeah. having special cocktails right. ready for them and, and then they come back when they're supposed to so we did have that question it's almost like an hour and a half if you're not going to give your guests three or four hours then just have it right away mm -hmm. uh, yes so if you are on if you are able to have your four o'clock ceremony you're done at 4 30 get your get your um, guests right into cocktail hour right. because then you you don't want them <laughs> drinking for two hours either. Right. Yes. you want them to be getting into dinner you don't want dinner at 6 30 7 right. o'clock at night or mm -hmm. you're gonna have a 10 o'clock dance we don't want that timeline's important right um planning or wedding without a first okay we did that one. Oh, uh what are some ideas to keep our guests busy while photos are being taken yeah we did that besides a cocktail hour yes uh, i think we just did that one um time between ceremony wedding in september what's a good time to start the ceremony okay we did that and when to book hotel oh yes i had that question oh, right so many guests asking me that like six months before the wedding and you have so to. frustrating <laughs> holy yeah but you have to especially in our area exactly. with such limited availability yes remember there's also airbnbs and if mm -hmm. you're working with the planner we know people who will rent out their spaces and full houses that are not on an airbnb site mm -hmm. so you want to definitely ask those kinds of questions um but hotels mm -hmm. as yeah. soon as you can block your rooms yeah as soon as you get your date. Yeah. Yep. That's, That's one right. of those things where you do have to do early. Oh, yeah. Like as soon as you get your date, you block those, yep. get a block room. So you have people coming from out of town. Right. Right. Yeah. And those ones I would say, I would do send the date, save the dates. Mm -hmm. And I would actually block off the rooms and hotel arrangements and travel mm -hmm. um, for those people. That's a great idea. Okay. Yeah. Well, look at us coming right in on time. Yay. Any questions on there? Can you? Oh, we have a question. Oh, we already had that. Uh, talk the difference between a venue coordinator and a day of and a day of coordinator. We kind of talked about that a little bit. Um, the venue coordinators, the coordinator like Diane over at Ambassador, yes. right? Who yeah. does didn't play in any other aspect of your day. Just the venue. Just first. the venue. Um, and I get this a lot because as I mentioned earlier, in my intake questionnaire, I always ask, who is your do you have a wedding planner? Mm -hmm. And question or answer I will get is oh my mom or my mm -hmm. sister or I will get the whoever the venue coordinator is yeah they so well that's do all that stuff it's not your wedding coordinator mm -hmm. yes they are coordinating everything at the venue and it's they always do an amazing job mm -hmm. yeah but are they going to make sure that you get the flowers delivered at 9 a.m mm -hmm. are they the ones who are going to make sure that uh the photographer and the videographer are at the right place are yes. they going to be pinning boutonnieres on your yes, right yes <laughs> um so you can't go into a wedding thinking that you all those details are going to be taken care of by the venue coordinator mm -hmm. unless they have full day of coordinating service which is separate from the venue coordinating mm -hmm. how to explain that okay mm -hmm. that was good. how did you feel that the two coordinators worked together fantastic yeah no I feel like you guys got along really well at the meeting <laughs> but it was good because I met with Diane first and um when I we were looking to book ambassador obviously we went through all the stuff with Diane and she helped pick out like okay so this is the layout that we typically do but what are your thoughts like how did you want this arranged right and then after we kind of came up with a rough draft that's when Lori came in and was like okay so this is kind of the envision Amanda talked about with me can we kind of make this work together and so that's when they kind of collaborated together and Diane gave Lori her expertise on the venue and then Lori gave her 
kind of what I envisioned. So it worked out really, really great. Yeah. And then from there, I did literally took it from you and it yes. was just me and Diane. And it was just her and it. Diane communicating. And I had no say, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I don't want to hear from you for like the next two weeks. Just me and Diane will work it out. And I'm like, Yes. Yeah, yeah it was great. <laughs> so, hope that answers your question, Jenny. And Brianna recommended efficiency. Oh, we have we have some efficiency. Mm -hmm. uh, Diane and Chris are both on this call. Uh, so both both are fantastic. Yes, mm -hmm. lots then, of great efficiency in our area. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, Brianna, you just send me a message, and I can help you do that. Okay. Alrighty. So here we are. We're right at the end. We're only about seven minutes behind, which in the wedding business, if you're seven minutes late, you're still half an hour early. <laughs> right on. Okay. So um, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, tuning in. And those who uh, didn't will obviously are obviously watching this on the recording. Uh, so thank you very much. We really appreciate you being a part of our first night. Thank you so much, Amanda. Thank you. And we'll do a little bit of a cheers. Here. Yes. Yay. Clink. Are you drinking? Are you drinking, Amanda? Is that what you did? Did you steal She Amanda's? stole my, my yes. answer. Well, thank you very much, everybody. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank cheers. You. Thank you.